Here we go with graphing absolute value inequalities. Okay, we're talking about a parent function that is y equals the absolute value of x. That is the most vanilla. This is centered at 0, 0. It doesn't have any special things about it. It looks like this. The vertex is at 0, 0. The slope of the right arm is 1. The slope of the left arm is negative 1. Okay, we can do different things. We can shift to the left or to the right, shift the vertex from the left or to the right. We can shift the vertex up or down. We can do a vertical stretch, which takes it in like a piece of gum and stretches it in a vertical manner. Or we can do a vertical compression, which smushes it down some. Okay, so let's do an example here, and we're going to do it with an equality and not an inequality first. So if I had to describe this, I would say, and then graph it, I would say, that it is an absolute value. Its parent is y equals the absolute value of x. The vertex moved two left and three down. And that's it. There's nothing else um, to describe. So if I wanted to graph it, this is what the parent function looks like, our little vanilla function. And let's see how the, the new function looks on top of it. So I'm going to take my little xy chart. I'm going to put the vertex, which is negative 2, negative 3, and re because remember that the x works backwards. It works opposite what you think. And then I'm going to um, plot that vertex, and then I'm going to choose a value less than negative 2 on the x-axis and one greater than negative 2 on the x-axis, and I'm going to plug them in. So when I plug negative 3 in, I get y equals negative 2. Remember, when you take something out of the absolute value symbol, it becomes positive. So I have a negative 3, negative 2. If I plug negative 1 in, I get the same thing, negative 2. Now I plant, plant, plot. I'm not planting anything. I plot those other two points, and you can see where I have my little v going on here. And I can connect it. And what you see is the identical graph except it's been moved. Um, it's been moved two to the left and three down. Okay, so let's try this one. Let's try an inequality. Y is less than two times the absolute value of x minus three. Let's describe it. The parent is y equals absolute value of x. There's a vertical. Or I'm sorry. The vertex is zero, negative three. There's nothing with there's nothing with the x, nothing else associated with the x, so we, it's 0. So it's uh, uh, there would be x plus 0, so it would be 0 minus 3. So it shifted 3 down. There's a vertical stretch here because there's a number out in front of the absolute value, and it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So let's see how we graph it. Well, we're going to do our little xy chart. We're going to put our vertex in the center here, 0, negative 3. We are going to uh, plot that, 0, negative 3. We're going to choose a value a little less than 0, which is negative 1, and a little more than 0, which could be 1. And by the way, you can make it negative 2 and 2, or negative 3 and 3. Um, so we have, when we plug in negative 1 for x, we get negative 1 for y. When we plug in 1 for x, we get negative 1 for y. And the reason I say to do it this way, where you ha have the same value below the x, uh, below the vertex, and, or to the left of the vertex and to the right, is you have some symmetry, and that's just a good way of checking yourself. So when we graph these, and then we look at our less than sign, we know that we're going to be doing it with a dotted line, and since it's less than, we're going to shade below. So that's what our graph looks like. And the slope of the right arm is m equals 2. Notice that that's what the that's what the um, slope is here. That's what the number outside looks like. Okay, and m equals negative 2 for the other side. All right, so let's do one that's a little more difficult. y is greater than negative 1 third absolute x minus 1 plus 2. So let's describe it. The parent is y equals absolute value of x. The vertex is at 1, 2. It shifts right up. It, I'm sorry, it shifts <laughs> shifts right 1 and up 2. It reflects over the x-axis. We know that because there's a negative out in front of that one-third. 
and the, it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one-third because we've multiplied by one-third. All right, to graph it, once again, we're following our own little prescription here. We're going to um, start with our vertex, which is at one, two. We're going to go down two. And why did I say go down to negative two, from one to negative two? That's a, a step of not one, but a step of three. Well, the reason I'm doing that is because I am smart enough to know that I don't want to have to graph a fraction. And since I have a third here, if I can have what's inside my absolute value to be a multiple of three, then I'm going to make, make it easier on myself with my multiplication times a fraction. So if I do negative two, I know that negative two minus one is going to give me a multiple of three. So I'm going to do negative two, and since I move down three, I'm also going to move up three. So I'll have one plus three is four. And once again, you can choose any number you want. I'm just trying to make it a little easier. I don't want to have to plot fractions. So if I have negative one-third times minus two minus one, gives me minus one-third times the absolute value of minus three, which is minus one-third times three plus two, which is minus one plus two, or one. You might want to slow that down a little so you can go back and get that. So this is one. If I plug in four, then I have minus one-third times the absolute value of three, which is three, plus two, once again, gives me one. So I'm going to plot my points. There's my three points. Um, I have just a greater than sign. So I, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to, so I know that I'm going to have a solid line. And being that it is greater than, I'm going to shade above. Okay. So let's recap. Recap how to describe and recap how to graph. Okay. You're going to say what your new vertex is. And remember, the x is, goes opposite to what you think, and the y stays the same. We're going to uh, ask, does it reflect over the x-axis? And how can I tell if it's multiplied, if the absolute value is multiplied by a negative? And then I ask myself, is there a vertical stretch? Well, if it is, then it's multiplied by a number greater than 1. Or is there a vertical compression? It, there is if it's multiplied by a fraction between 0 and 1. Once again, we're not going to worry about horizontal stretches and compressions yet. That comes later. All right, so in the graphing, what do I do? Well, first thing I do is identify the vertex, and then I make my chart. In the center of my chart, I'm going, going to put my vertex, the coordinates of my vertex, and I'm going to choose an x value less than the vertex and an x value greater than the vertex in my chart. Then I'm going to plug in that, those two values of x and solve for y, and that will give me my three points. Then I'm going to plot those three points. I'm going to connect them based on whether it's going to be a solid line or a dotted line, and I'm going to shade. So let's try this one. y is less than negative absolute, absolute x plus 1 minus 3. So the vertex is at minus 1 minus 3. It is a reflection over the x-axis because the absolute value is multiplied by a negative. There is no stretch or compression because the number that's out in front of that would just be a 1 that we don't write, negative 1. And if it's 1, then nothing gets stretched, nothing gets compressed, it stays the same. So to graph it, I'm going to do my xy chart. I'm going to put minus 1, minus 3 in there for my uh, vertex. I'm going to choose a number below negative 1, would be ne which I'm going to choose negative 2 and one above, which is zero, the same distance from negative one. And I'm going to plug these numbers in so that I find out that I have negative two, negative two, and zero, negative two. So I have my three points. I'm going to plot them. I have y is less than, so I know that my I'm going to have a dotted line. And being that it's less than, I'm going to shade below. So that's it, folks. Oh, the baby looks really mean today. Hope he really isn't. Hope you understood, and uh, I'll see you in class. Bye.